All right, we're live. Good mm -hmm. evening, good morning, depending on where you are. Uh, my name is Divna, and I am. We are starting our very first gaming as women live roundtable with about contraception, pregnancy, and uh, I think I just heard a baby in the background saying hello. But um, and childbirth and gaming. Oh, actually, that might be a cat. But um, <laughs> cats, babies. Oh, okay. Same diff, right? Mm. But um, tonight, uh, my name is Dimfna. I post on. I'm a contributor on the site, and I presumably do other gaming-related things. But we have some awesome guests here. I well, not guests, contributors to the site. Um, I'm going to start off with introducing Anna Kreider. Sorry, Anna Kreider. Rhymes That's with Dryder. She probably doesn't worship Lolf, but you can't be too sure. I can't see the lower half of her body, so she might be a spider down there. I don't know. <laughs> but um, maybe she's got like 10,000 spider young, and that's why she wants oh, to Oh, God, it. no. No. Ah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, she is a quadruple threat <laughs> author, game designer, illustrator, self-publisher, blogger at uh, Don't Make okay. Me a Sandwich, as a very famous uh, feminist gaming blog, recently put out, um, let's see, Sexy Time Adventures. Is that your most recent thing? Uh, yeah. A uh, hack oh, for except I, I kickstarted oh. The Ruined Empire, which is, yeah. Yeah. So, which will be out soon. Right. Okay, cool. And we have, uh, let's see, we've got McGay Baker here. You might have heard of her, maybe just a little bit. A definitely indie powerhouse, author, game designer, publisher, uh, behind Night Sky Press, she's in games like Siren, games like Thousand One Nights, lots of others. Uh, what you may not also know about her is that she was a postpartum depression counselor for a dozen years or so. Does that sound right? Yeah, a dozen years. And uh, so obviously this is a topic kind of close to her. Mm -hmm. And the last but not least, we have the astonishingly prolific Philomena Young, um, I think she's been in over, what, 60 books now, I think, I around there. Counting. Do you stop counting? <laughs> uh, but uh, Philomena Young also has uh, a publisher with Machine Age um, behind the games like Flat Pack. And I know she's recently done a twine game called Don't Push um, mm -hmm. about childbirth, and we are going to link to that on YouTube. So uh, definitely check that out. And... Uh, Right, I guess uh, why don't we just go ahead and get started. I don't want to take too long on this. So, um, but oh, one thing I did want to say so I can keep, so you guys can he keep, keep listening to me talk and then I swear I'll let the interesting people start talking. Um, all of us here, we're all women, but we want to acknowledge that people of all genders do give birth. It's not just women. And um, we're going to try to use some trans-inclusive language. I know it's, sometimes it can be kind of hard to just default to saying, you know, pregnant women, and we should be saying things like pregnant people. But um, just uh, just keep in mind we're we're kind of we're going to do our best to see if we can we can keep the language inclusive. Um, anyway, moving on. Let's see. So, so why would we talk about pregnancy, childbirth, contraception, and gaming? Um, why would we bring this up in a game? Uh, why don't we just, you know, let the stork take care of it? Uh, what, do, what do you guys think? Why, sh why would we want to talk about a topic like this? Because it's part of life. Because women getting pregnant, people getting pregnant, um, and giving birth is part of life. And if we wish to have games that include aspects of your life, that's part of it. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, it, you know, a lot of um, more traditional gaming, um, you know, murder hoboing, uh, going around killing things, taking their stuff, um, it's kind of been the dominant mode of gaming for a really long time. And um, personally, I'm way more interested in exploring stories that haven't been told, uh, just because I, I get so tired of the same stories over and over and over again. Um, and... Um, you know, gaming is a way that you can explore an experience that isn't your own. Um, so I, I think that's a great reason um, to explore this whole issue. Um, you know, just because um, it, I think it's a it's some, it's something that deserves attention. I think that there's a couple other things. Um, Shalomina, do you want to say something first, or 
Can I go ahead? Yeah, uh, it, because people are going to do it anyway. Um, <laughs> every game I've ever played in where there's a possibility for someone to get pregnant, someone is going to get pregnant. Yeah. Uh, it's a thing that happens, and GMs and storytellers and, and directors and all that sort of thing, they often have absolutely nothing to work with. Um, and so the answers that they come up with are ignorant or misguided or scary or focus on a really weird way of looking at pregnancy. Um, and since they're going to do it anyway, you might as well give them tools to do it right. Yeah, that leads perfect, perfect segue like, to what I'm going to say, which is that it's role playing is another way we practice things. And it's in a way we try on, like Anna said, we, we can try on situations we might not be in or might not yet be in. Think about how we want to encounter those, how we want to shape those. If you're a woman who is never going to give birth, it may be something you want to explore in fiction. Um, if you're a woman who has given birth, if you're a person who has given birth, um, it may be something you want to process. One of the things for me, one of the reasons I think it's important to have contraception, pregnancy, and childbirth, and whole fertility world, uh, a topic that can be uh, examined in gaming is to upend myths about those things, um, that if we can create new narratives or different narratives through role-playing around fertility, contraception, pregnancy, and childbirth, uh, it broadens our actual experience of those things. If the dominant narrative that we see which is slowly changing, very slowly changing, but if the dominant narrative that we see over and over in the media is, oh my gosh, she's having a baby! <laughs> Somebody boil water! You know, duh. You know, um, if we can shift that narrative to being that birth happens in lots of different ways, in lots of different situations, well, lots of times it's, it's just part of life. It's not a massive crisis. When it is a crisis, it's a crisis. But that's not always. And so I think that's, um, for me, in terms of my design work and my gaming work, that's the place that I'm sitting with why it's important to talk about these topics, is to um, broaden out the stories, like you know, like Anna and Philomena have said, to broaden out the available stories around this subject, and the related subjects. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, Anna. What were you about to say? Um, I was just going to say that, um, you know, um, uh, Miguel was saying about how the only stories we get are, um, you know, oh, it's, a, it's a terrible thing, everyone's panicking. Um, the other thing I get really tired of seeing is um, uh, pregnancy as body horror. Um, man, that comes up, like, all the time in pregnancy or in gaming. Um, Dragon Age Origins, don't even get me started on the deep roads. Um, you know, like convention games, uh, I don't even know how many times I've had a GM go, and she's pregnant with a demon baby, you know, yeah. I mean, and it's just, um, it gets so old, you know, I mean, like, I had probably one of the worst birth experiences of anyone that I know, I don't really want to relive that crap, um, I, I would like to, if there's going to be pregnancy, and childbirth in my games, I would like it, you know, to, to role play a more positive experience of that. And Mina. Yeah, so everybody you kill in a game, somebody gave birth to them. Hmm. <laughs> and we have no problems killing people on screen. That's never an issue. Uh, and we have no problems having complicated sets of rules that emulate their death, which is... God, we model death in games all the time, and nobody even stops to think how weird that is. But modeling pregnancy, that is very, very scary. And I, I think guess. that's that's kind of where where I'd I'd, I'd like to go go next, if, if if we could, just to mm -hmm. move things along. Is um, what what are some different ways that that we can kind of model pregnancy, uh, model and um, childbirth in games? What do you mm -hmm. think are, are some some different ways you can go about that? Different ways you've tried. Um, well, I think approaches we've, you'd like to see. But I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Please, yeah. Uh, I think no. we've we've hit on one of them. It's like body horror is a thing to look at. You know, it is scary, and there are some people for whom the whole topic of, of pregnancy and childbirth is legitimately terrifying. 
or there are people who have gone through really hellish experiences. So that is a place. Those stories do exist. It's also great to look at, I think, um, both like times when it's it's just you know it's just life. Yes, this is a person who happens to be pregnant, doing her thing, doing you know, defending the city or making the important decisions or casting the spell or whatever, and you just continue on. That's what you're doing, you know, surviving in the wastelands of the apocalypse, whatever. Um, that there are inconveniences and there are different ways that you may have your the character may have to operate, but it's not. Um, it's not a crisis, it's not body horror. So those are two huge stories. Um, there's a huge story there, uh, potential for um, all kinds of stories around fertility and conception. Uh, about, you know, if someone wants desperately to be pregnant and is having a really hard time getting pregnant, huge opportunity for story. Uh, someone, there's a problem pregnancy, you know, that is a reality in very many people's lives, that there's a problem pregnancy. We can deal with that in stories too. Uh, what do you do with that? Brings up all your moral issues, all of everything. Like there's any game that where your moral decisions or ethical decisions, like who's in control and how does this, how does this go down? Um, those are those are full of places where you can bring in fertility issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 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 sort of sort of interesting to. Um, I, I think that our, we're sort of so focused, I think especially in fantasy role playing, on the uh, the demon baby kind of narrative mm -hmm. or the, the mystical pregnancy. Um, Feminist Freaking has an outstanding video on this. Um, if you've never seen it, I'm, I'll put links to it in the comments, but on the, the sort of prevalence of the, the mystical. Christ, I just had one on Sleepy Hollow and I was like, really, really 2014? But um, mm -hmm. love you, Sleepy Hollow, but come on. But um, anyway, so. Yeah, it's uh, kind of move this sort of idea that Meg's hitting on that. My God, some people might actually want to be pregnant. You know, <laughs> <laughs> go figure. That might be something that people do. You know, intentionally. Uh, <laughs> intentionally, even. Oh my God. I mean, that's just. Uh, it kind of shows you just how um, kind of where the, the narrative is, I guess. Uh, though, though it's moving slowly, as you say. Um, mm -hmm. But sorry, Anna, please go on. I. Oh sure. Um you know, I think Meg hit on something, um, you know, I, I, I would just like to see um, pregnancy um, just be a thing that's normal, you know. Um, mm -hmm. It's sad that this isn't a game about humans, but um, honestly the best way of um, seeing this dealt with recently um, was I played a con game of the Warren, um, and yes, you're playing rabbits, uh, but you know, at character creation, if you choose to play a female rabbit, there's like the little boxes, are you pregnant or are you not pregnant? Uh, and if you're pregnant, like, cool. You're just gonna run around and be pregnant and usually have your babies at like the worst possible time, but that's more because you're rabbits um, and everything is terrible when you're a rabbit, apparently, according to Warren. But, um, you know, I'd, I'd just like to see more games um, like they even kind of front end loaded and, and say, hey, this is an option um, at character creation for something that we can explore. Yeah, definitely. Um, Mina, go on. So, um, you know, I'm a big white wolf writer, uh, Onyx Path. Ooh. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I do a lot of work over there, and recently I was able to put in a real published book for realsies, I swear, um, some guidelines for pregnancy. And it it's not the first set of guidelines for pregnancy in a World of Darkness book, but maybe it's the first written by someone who's had a baby. I could be wrong. <laughs> um... <clears throat> And what I did was, strictly speaking, write what is an average experience. Not an emergency experience, not a traumatic experience, and I only really focus on the actual, the, playing the character through the pregnancy. And it's just a set of very, very minimal, mild adjustments that match uh, generally things that most women and most people report to experience, strong dreams, um, exhaustion, or, or feeling tired, or um, the sudden burst of energy in the second trimester that no one can really, you know, that it's, it's amazing and it's awesome when you can experience it. And, you know, then the uh, weird internalization that happens in the third trimester where a, a lot of people experience, like, just being more in tune with themselves than they ever have been in their whole lives. And it's, it's just tiny little itty bitty things because I wanted to put in a book straight up 
actually most of this is stuff that you can manage. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be emergency. It's it could just be a checkbox in a character sheet, pregnant, not pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, and I really I you know, I got I got a lot of positive response from that. I also got a lot of people who are basically like, well, why model it at all? Why nar why not leave it to narrative? And I don't know if that's a point for later in the discussion or not. But no, please go into it. I'm I'm kind of I think that's kind of an yeah. interesting yeah. interesting idea. Is, you know why so, do do we want to reflect this mechanically or do we just yeah. want to just sort of you know I, I hate to say hand wave because I feel that feels a little pejorative to me. Right. Than, but go on. Yeah. So it, it depends on the game, of course, naturally, obviously, and the gamers at the table and their experience with childbirth and and how that all works. Um, if you don't want to put a system on a thing, I can understand that, but I'm a gamer who is here for system, and I'm here for a blend of system and story, not just system and story, and so I need to see something that reflects what is happening to my character in the dice, mm -hmm. and, and vice versa. So, you know, I can't just, and, and, and like I said earlier, people are going to put rules on these things anyway. I can remember a number of god-awful chat games where somebody who has never had anything near a baby um, has decided that these are the st specific statistics as to whether or not you get knocked up, mm -hmm. and these are the specific statistics on how that goes, mm -hmm. and then since we've added all these statistics, now everybody is pregnant, and guess what? Now we have to slaughter all of the babies because there's too many babies in the game. And that's just a terrible downhill slide that no one should ever go on. <laughs> and so you have to. I almost feel like it's my responsibility in some levels as a developer who has some experience with this to say, oh, well, slow down. <laughs> Here's some stuff. And that acts as a stop gate, uh, a stop gap for people who really don't even know where to begin but want to begin. It's there. You can build from this rather than building from some weird, scary preconceptions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think that having... I think there's some validity to having the statistics, um, but I think it's more on the line of it doesn't already it doesn't always happen, you know, mm -hmm. it, you know, because I, I know the statistics you're talking about. I'm like, oh, how you know percentage of times, but right. I mean, the, the I think tipping the other way of saying you know you can have sex and not get pregnant, you know, there is contraception in the world, and to have that like. There's a lot of stuff like we don't have games that detail people's intestinal troubles either, but <laughs> um, <laughs> you know it's like the first time there was ever a, a toilet flush on television. It's like what, you know? And I feel like there's a little bit of that going on with this. It's like wow, you mean we're actually going to talk about contraception? And I remember a time when someone, um, this was very early in my gaming, very 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 early in my gaming, with someone uh, referenced using a condom. I thought it was awesome. I was like 12 at the time. I said, this is so cool, you know, that people are thinking, what's the whole picture here? And to bring those details in around um, how frequently, you know, how frequently do people get pregnant? Um, how effective is contraception? You know, it's not like we want to, you know, I've been a sex ed teacher for a pretty much anywhere I can be for a lot of years. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a, a place that I don't think we're desperate for a game that details efficacy rates of various contraception. But having a little bit more of that side of things that Mina was saying, you know, how let's just make it level headed. How often does this happen? How often do you know is there a miscarriage? You know, what what happens there a little bit? Just the reason to not hand wave it, I think Divna, as you said, um, is to give people some support, give players and give GMs a little support uh, on how to handle those situations when they inevitably arise. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's 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 a great point. Um, Anna, what were you? Um, you like you wanted to say something. Yes. Um, so, uh, Philomena kind of touched on. Um, you know, uh, wanting to create mechanical systems that support. Um, this type of storytelling, and uh, oh, I'm about to go all Miss Andrus here. Um, so, bring it. Uh, Come on. So you know, there's some. Um, I don't know. It just seems like um, you know, there's male designers, and they design a system that does a very particular thing, uh, and it can be 
anything. Um, but I mean, recently, um, a lot of what I've been hearing has been, oh my god, like, Powered by the Apocalypse is the best system ever, and um, I agree with them because I hack it all the time. But um, it creates worlds that are terrible and broken and dysfunctional, and people are violent and, and sociopathic, and, um, you know, I, I love it, but that's, like, a very particular thing. Um, but then when you talk about creating a mechanical system that... Um, you know, like, the instant you talk about saying, well, I want to create a mechanical system that uh, would, you know, emulate pregnancy and childbirth and contraception, um, people start freaking out because we're destroying gaming, oh, God. Um, you know, and because that's a woman's story. And, of course, not all people who are pregnant are women. But, you know, like, that's seen as it's a woman not, thing. It's and, ew, so keep keep the woman things out of our games, that's icky and we don't... So, um, you know, I, I think it's like anything else. Um, it's a particular kind of story and uh, as game designers, what we do is we create systems that make particular types of stories. Um, so it's definitely... I don't know. I think it's, it's definitely a Tempest in a Teapot um, and it's related to the fact that people just aren't comfortable with women's stories being told. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I, um, I, one of the things that I think I, I kind of wanted to get into a little bit, because I, I, sometimes I feel like they're, it seems like they're kind of separate here, is um, a little bit on contraception, because, and pregnancy rates and fertility and how that works in games. Um, uh, I, I don't know if you guys have any sort of broad thoughts about that, but I, uh, <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay, broad thoughts. <laughs> uh, Mina, what's up? So my first experience with both contraception and contraception games happened at the same time. Uh, Eight thousand years ago, roughly, uh, I played my first game of Cyberpunk 2020. And um, in the cyberware that you can get implanted in your body uh, is something called the Mister. Good night, Mr. Long Night. I don't know. But, but basically, it's an insert that you put into your body, and theoretically, according to the text, it's not clear at all. Um, nobody gets pregnant that doesn't want to, and you can have an erection all night. Like, that's basically what it implies. Um, and there, and then it, there's a side comment where, it, like, there's one little sentence that says there's a female version of this, too. And that's it. <laughs> like, we don't know what it means. We just know there is one. Um, and at the time, like, I knew what contraception was, I knew what it was, but I didn't really know about it in those terms. And as a result of that book, I went and started digging deeper in, like, okay, well, what else is there other than condoms? Like, how, how could you have bioware, you know, cybernetic implants that affect your ability to reproduce? Oh, and my mind was blown. Um, so in that way, a really kind of regressive book opened, and, well, progressive at its time, I should probably say, um, gave me an opportunity to look into that stuff more, which actually made me safer in my early sexual encounters. So, you know, I guess one argument for having contraception in your games is you're going to have some teenagers who are going to play these games, and they may learn something useful. Think about the children. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that, is, um, that is not quite where I thought that, where that was going to go, but that's really <laughs> interesting. No, I think that's, that's, that's very interesting. Um, Actually, what's, what's really cool is the birth control I have right now is a subdermal implant. I know. So I actually fulfilled my own fantasy, and I have the don't get pregnant by something that's inserted in your body thing. I won't it's ask really cool. about the arousal aspect of that, because mm. that's, mm. you know, that's kind of your own <laughs> business. But um, one of the things that uh, I, I think is, is kind of interesting about, you know, working in sort of fantasy worlds is that we can... We can do things like have a. Um, for me, I mean, I, I I know I said I wouldn't talk too much, but I'm I'm thinking about Rothling's Mark myself, and um, that there's a a a way different ways you can even envision contraception. You know, you can do it with like, oh, you know, hey, we can do it with magic, or you can you can say, hey, well, it it won't. We only have a way to do it, but for men. Um, I fear we may have lost McGay Baker. She seems to be out of the order, but um, anyway, I just, you know, I think that there's a lot of sort of possibilities you can kind of imagine out there, 
and um, I think it could be cool. But um, we do have a question from our panel, or not for our panel, that we got uh, a little earlier, and I am going to go ahead and ask uh, the two of us that are remaining, uh, four women enter, three women leave, I guess. Um, there is a, uh, a guy named Sam. He went in and asked us, um, I was interested in the panel's take on pregnancy and childbirth in a fantasy RPG. Does it subtract from the experience to have things like magical healing that helps fix pregnancy complications, magical contraception, and the like? Um, okay. What do you guys think? If, uh, um, if we can just make things easier with magic, does that somehow... Sure. I think that, well, in, Mina just mentioned the cyberpunk game. And I was going to mention Love in the Time of War. Which is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful game, which starts with the premise of one of the people being pregnant. Uh, it's a couple that's separated by war. Someone's away on the front. Someone is pregnant at home. Uh, I think that hand leading with magic is fine, depending on what game you're playing. Not all games are the same. Not all games have to handle all the same stories, all the same information. That's why we're writing so many of them. That's why we've got so many options now. When we just had D and D and Tal's Lanta and you know Cyberpunk Shadowrun like the, the, or the first bits, there wasn't as much variety and much options. Now you can do a whole kind of figuring out like, okay, how do I want to handle sex and pregnancy and fertility and contraception and all those? Do I want to play D and D, or do I want to play Apocalypse World? Do I want to play? I don't know. Love of the Time of War, what do you want to play? How do you want to deal with it? And that can become one of the things you consider. So I think having hand waving with magic is fine if that's what you want to have happen. Mm. Um, if that's not what you're looking for, do it differently because you can. Hmm. Yeah, one of the things that, um, if, as long as we're on the subject of, of sort of fantasy stuff, is that I always find interesting is that there are a lot of fantasy settings that sort of emulate these, you know, um, these sort of traditional kind of classical European pagan gods and all that, but um, like there are there there's no there's there's no sexiness in it anywhere, right? I mean they have like a god of farming, but you know I mean <laughs> and like a vague thing about a halfling goddess of your t of fertility, but like they don't have like Yandala as like the Sheila Nagig figure, right? They don't have you know. <laughs> She never, you know, no, nobody's ever like actually giving birth, or they don't even really talk about that. It's a, uh, it's all sort of weirdly abstracted from that. But uh, it's just something that just came to mind. It's a, uh, uh, I don't know. But Mina, you you have you have something else. Well, and and like with the most recent edition of D and D four point right? The reference to five, darling, five. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm talking about the one that's not five. Sorry. Um, the only reference we have to really childbirth and, or anything close to childbirth in the books is the description of half works, which tells you that they're basically all rape babies. Um, so we we only have a negative view of sex there. Oh and, gosh, and, was that in, was that in fourth head? Mm -hmm. I think I think it was. Oh, that's sad. Yeah, um, a book marketed to you know twelve and fourteen year olds, but neither here nor there. Um, different topic. Um, so, so as far as do I mind that magic could fix childbirth? Um, no, only because I think that you often have GMs who don't know and assume it's all an emergency and it's all death. And like, if if you really had a human culture or a series of human cultures that had the mortality rate that seems to be presented, we would all be dead. None of us would have ever been born. Our ancestors would never have been born because everybody dies in childbirth. Now, infant mortality, serious issue, huge thing, big scary numbers, but it's still a percentage of the whole. And unfortunately, the only thing that you ever have that happens on screen is those tragic moments because tragedy is conflict or blah, blah, blah. Um, so if I have a magic spell that I can cast and hand wave that, then I can get on to having my, my pregnant mama fighting orcs and I can I can avoid that story if I don't want to tell that story. Mm -hmm. And I, I like things in there that I, as the player, am empowered to say, yeah, but we don't have to do that. Here, look, I have a spell. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Meg, what's up? 
uh, what Mina just said about 12 and 14 year old boys reminded me that not everybody's going to have a good sense of uh, pregnancy and childbirth period. They might not right. know how any of that works. They right. might they want they want to have the story like let's deal with my elf character being pregnant because that would be fun but I don't really know how that works. So let's just hand wave the complicated parts because the part I'm really interested in is that she's pregnant and then there's a baby. You know, so that's another in the pro column for occasionally magic hand waving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Anna, what's up? Um, You've been quiet. We all want to hear you. Yeah, uh, I, well, I mean, Mina and Meg are saying very smart things. So um, just. Um, you know, the, the thing that strikes me is um, the introductions of pretty much D&D &D and, like, all these fantasy RPGs, like, they say in the character creation, like, oh, well, you know, men and women can be equal adventurers, but then, like, any... I don't know, just, it seems like everyone I know who has played a fantasy campaign of any length has some horror story about some character being pregnant and either hap horrible things happening because of pregnancy or, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, so yeah, like having being able to be like I have a spell would be great because um, it would I don't know set expectations for GMs that like hey people are allowed to be pregnant and you know give birth and like everything can be fine, mm -hmm. um, especially from my personal perspective um, uh, in my pre-child life uh, I was a volunteer taekwondo instructor um, I continued teaching right up until five and a half months and the only reason I stopped is because uh, I have asthma and uh, my baby was crowding out my lungs so that uh, was not fun um, but you know um, I definitely have personal experience in that it is totally possible to kick ass and be pregnant at the same time so um, were, were you doing any taekwondo against orcs though? <laughs> no no uh, there were not any orcs there were just um, kind of grunt, grumpy teenagers. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, so just being able to have something um, that could set expectations for the GM, um, so when the GM is reading through the book, just, I don't know, you can have a story that's not horrible, I promise. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good point. So I think we're going to start kind of winding down a little bit, and I think in sort of an appropriate way, um, I think Meg wants to talk a little bit about postpartum stories, and mm -hmm. she's kind of the expert there. Let's... Uh, I'd love to hear what you had to say. Um, yeah. Uh, one of the places that um, this also opens up, we open up talking about uh, um, this, uh, pregnancy and childbirth and all that, is looking at postpartum period. Well, what, do you, what do you do when there's a new baby? And how, do you, how does that upend your world? And that's, that is very, very, very disruptive for the new parents. Um, doesn't matter how well adapted you were, how great your situation was, it's going to make your world flip upside down. And it's going to bring up every tiny scrap of baggage you have. Um, the difference between postpartum um, neurosis and postpartum psychosis is like three and a half hours of sleep, uh, tipping over from when you're freaking out to when you're actually psychotic. It's, it's scary. It's a scary world. And that, I think, for me, from my background, more than pregnancy body horror, is the story about postpartum because the, some of the things that do happen in postpartum are horrific and are terrifying. Um, it's not always that way. Dealing with the transition is huge and if you're looking at role-playing as a way to model or experience or try on different roles, that is another place where you're looking at, okay, what's it like? Oh god, now we've got to think about the, there's this little baby um, half half elf, half orc baby that we all love so much. Uh, it needs food. It needs diapers. What do we do for diapers? You know, all these kinds of things. And how do the parents adapt? And how do we deal with it? So that's another area of storytelling um, beyond just the fertility and the contraception and pregnancy and childbirth. Is how does the party adapt to the new baby? How do they adapt to having a pregnant a pregnant person? Um, and I look at Saga. In the comic saga, and um, oddly, Lone Wolf and Cub, as ways to look at how do you shape and um, the X Men, the one that's all women, um, Rogue, uh, uh, Jubilee's baby. Um, how does a team of adventurers 
deal with caring for an infant that they care about. Because it's an interesting story. Um, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I, I like it. I I, I want to. It's it makes me think of um what the the film uh, uh gosh what's his name the fellow who did Paprika and Paranoia Agent and all that um Tokyo Godfathers hmm. uh sort of but with like in Faroon or something but um instead of homeless people they're like elves or whatever but yeah hmm. no, it would be like a, I think that's a really cool premise for a campaign I think that'd be be really fun um uh, Mino. Well, and, and here's the reality, because there's a lot of things about pregnancy that can go wrong that are totally invisible to the population at large. Um, if we put it on a table, we are spreading the story. Um, years ago, I had a gaming group that one of the people, their significant other, was um, going through, she had her baby, kind of during the course of while we were having our campaign, not literally at the table, although she did have some early labor while we were all hanging out, and that was exciting, but... Um, Afterwards, she stopped coming to hang out through the gates, and her her mate, boyfriend, whatever it, whatever the relationship was, he had totally tuned out that she was going on a serious slide into not even just postpartum depression, but postpartum psychosis. Um, and he would kind of like grumble a little bit about like she's not the same person. There's some weird things going on. It's you know, like it's not none of it seems right, but he was so tuned out to the idea that there was a problem because no one had told him, mm. and you know as a result he was literally just ignoring what was really very a dangerous situation, and I feel like <clears throat> I felt like an ass if if I had run a storyline earlier in the campaign, who knows. Um, I mean, we, we sat him down and we talked to him. Well, I sat him down and I talked to him about the whole thing. And I don't know where it went from there because he left the group. Um, <clears throat> I hope it was to take care of her. You know, who knows? Um, but, like, basically, there's these invisible things that happen afterwards that nobody ever talks about. Um, and, you know, we can fix that. Where We can have more conversations about it just through games because games teach empathy. They absolutely teach empathy. Um, so... That's what I think. Amen. <laughs> awesome. Amen. So can, on that note, can I just do a quick shout out to um, postpartum.net and postpartumprogress.com uh, if you're dealing with postpartum issues. Thanks. Awesome. Yes, I will totally include those links uh, when I put this up on YouTube. Um, Anna, one quick word from you, and I think we'll probably cut it there. I We could probably talk okay. about this for a very long time, but... Yeah. Want to make sure um, that we keep it down to a watchable length. Yeah, for sure. Um, I basically I just want to come back to Philomena. Um, you know, it's this is why it's important to tell women's stories, and again, not more it, the perception that pregnancy is a woman's story. That's not always the case, but um, because um, people need to see themselves reflected. Um, in the stories that get told, um, you know, because a lot, um, I, I forget who said it, but, um, you know, a, a lot of the time gaming can be a form of practice, um, and if you've never, you know, encountered a story about the situation or you've never played through a story, um, it can be very overwhelming when you're in that situation yourself. I mean, I remember feeling like I was losing my mind after I had Kara because she was not sleeping. Um, you know, and that was very, like, I I had no idea. And, and, and I was very lucky that um, I had family who basically were able to be like, no, go sleep. Um, and that got me through it. But, um, you know, it's, it's just, again, another reason why it's so important um, that people are making games about this. Unfortunately, I don't... I don't have a good suggestion for a game that does this topic well. Um, mm -hmm. Meg, did you have one? Um, I think games that handle pregnancy and childbirth well, um, Apocalypse World and the various ones that... I mean, there's other Apocalypse World ones that handle well. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Oh, my gosh, we lost Meg. But... Uh, Mina, do you have any suggestions? I mean, obviously you, you wrote an entire book on it, so presumably you think that that does, does pregnancy pretty goddamn well. But uh, I, I didn't write a book on it. I snuck in a thousand words in an existing book, so to, to be totally fair. Really? Um, I thought 
think they should have just let you write that whole goddamn thing. Well, My, there's, some, there's some push to let me do pregnancy semicolon the birthing, um, which I would totally. <laughs> do, but. <laughs> um, uh, well, I mean, isn't that what what White Wolf games are all about? Is that like you you're going along and living this normal life, and then suddenly you have this thing that changes everything, and you have all these weird new powers. That's oh, yeah, pretty much like being a pregnant, lot of those games right? are just straight up like a metaphor. No question. Meg <laughs> Meg. But I, I don't know. She keeps flashing in and out. But mm. anyway, um, any thoughts on, on games that do that well? Um, no. Besides, no, I haven't seen any games yeah. that specifically call it out. I've tried. I don't know how. I've never seen it. I've, I've never played my stuff at the table to know whether it's actually going to work, so I can't mm -hmm. say that I know that my stuff does it right. Um, mm -hmm. I, I haven't seen Apocalypse World do it. I haven't seen anywhere where it's specifically called out in Apocalypse World. I'm probably just missing the incredible hack or whatever that's that does that. Mm -hmm. But in my experience, I have not seen a game that I feel like, like even Burning Wheel. There's a you get a plus one to your constitution when you're done, right? Like it's it's kind of a and done and over thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I I haven't experienced it, but my gaming experience is pretty specific. So okay. So, yes, Meg, you were in the middle of recommending Apocalypse World, and then you, well, we, we lost you yeah. like, right in the middle of that. So if you want to keep going. There's a couple things that I think... Um, um, that's more in terms of, like, the uh, fertility, contraception, pregnancy issues. Yeah. Um, uh, we don't have hard-baked into Apocalypse World things around birth, um, mm -hmm. but I definitely know that it supports doing stories of birth. Uh, some of them have been really good, some have been really creepy. Um, there's a Apocalypse World hack in the works called Legacy, which is a generational game. Uh, and other generational games that come to mind uh, would be um, uh, Pendragon and... Um, okay. What was the Tim Copang game? Hero's from Banner. Yes, thank you, Hero's Banner, where mm -hmm. obviously pregnancy matters because it's generational. Um, yeah. and I, I can't say that... Matter. I, 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 the, the take on, on, on pregnancy in King Arthur Pendragon uh, is a little... I, I wrote yeah, about it on it's, 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 it's I agree, I it's, agree. It's, it's sketchy. It's a yeah. little sketchy, but, uh, but, 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 it, but it's there. At least it, it acknowledges that the Stark doesn't just bring babies. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Guess. But um, anyway, I think that'll that'll be it for us tonight. I want to thank all you guys. You ladies are awesome. Um, I am so so thrilled to be kind of hosting this here with you guys and having this awesome group of women talking about this subject. I think it's a phenomenal. Uh, it's a very. I think it's a great time to be a a a, a woman in gaming, mm -hmm. and to talk about things that are kind of traditionally considered to be women's issues, and that this stuff is finally kind of getting talked about by. By awesome people like you. So, um, if you're out there in YouTube land, thanks for watching, and uh, check out some of these links in the comments. And uh, good night. Good night. Bye.